I'd like to call the April 17th meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. Um, very short meeting tonight, but sh short but impactful, um, as you'll see later. We're going to have some liaison reports and public comment. Bob's report. Um, we're going to give a uh, proclamation for public safety uh, telecommunications week, and we're going to hear some really compelling and great stories from our from our public safety group. Uh, we're going to have a hearing. Um, Actually, it's a big continuation of the hearing, or no, a, a hearing uh, for 467 Main Street, and then um, change of a DBA corporate structure for the Art Lounge. I think we've already done minutes. Yep. Um, Did we do the March 27th? Um, yeah, I think those were all. Oh, we did three sets last time. Mm. Well, we'll figure. Oh, we'll figure, right. we'll yep. figure that out. So. Um, uh, so just getting started, um, liaison reports. John, I'll start well, first. To you. I think all the public safety people ought to sit down and relax. You can sit down, but don't relax. Uh, never, never. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, it's a calm crowd tonight, so you guys yeah. can sit and relax. I think. <laughs> we'll be just be fine. ready. Uh, I, um, I actually don't have an official liaison report, but I do have a... You know, I have an update on the greatest parade ever uh, that's coming on April 29th. Um, matter of fact, a lot of the people in this room are going to be helping us with that parade. Um, Little League softball and Little League uh, baseball are teaming up to bring 700 kids into a parade. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a lot of help from people in this room um, putting together uh, the... Um, the pipes and drums, the putting together an honor guard. Um, Chief Burns tells me the fire engine's going to be uh, locked and loaded, ready to go, and making lots of noise in the front. And the chief tells the other chief tells me there'll be one, in the, there'll be a cruiser in the back, letting everybody know it's over. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I would just suggest to everybody, you know, a lot of the people here in this room will be there, but a lot of people um, that might be watching. Um, it's Sunday morning, the 29th. Um, we did have just a small crisis. We had to rearrange the time a little bit to 1030 to make sure that everybody could get in and out of the parking lots at the right time. So um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Shriners, clowns, um, uh, the high school band is going to be joining us as well as the other ones that I mentioned. So, um, And there'll be a dedication of two brand new um, batting cages that have been privately funded um, by Reading Little League Baseball. And those, one will be a rededication uh, to Ernie Mello and the other to um, a recently deceased um, gentleman from Little League. And so it's gonna be a great day. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I don't actually think anybody can get mad about this. I think it's just gonna be a good time. So that's all I got. Mm, sounds like fun. Just pray for sunshine and yeah. good weather. Yep. If I could just ask a question. Um, John, you said at some point this was done in the past. How long ago was this done? I think that the last time this was done would have been uh, in the, possibly in the late 50s, but maybe oh, as wow. short a time ago as the early 60s. But it's been couple, over 50 years, I think, since A couple it's people come up to me and they remember doing it as a kid. Yeah. So I had never um, heard of it until you mentioned it. Yeah, it used to be a really big deal. And, you know, in a lot of other places, it is a big deal. I know I've been going year after year out to Hopkins. And uh, for my grand, my grandchildren all played either softball or or baseball, and they also teamed up and did the same thing. It's a, it's it's not quite as big as yesterday in Hopkinton, but it's big. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. So, and, uh, and on a personal note, I greatly enjoyed the fact that for the first time we had someone come to a DRT meeting and sign in as a clown. <laughs> <laughs> on their own. On their own. On their own. And, and readily admitted, that's what I do. We, I wouldn't let them wear the nose in, though. We stopped it at that. But it was highly organized. Great. Yeah, that's it for me. Dan? Sure. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have passed out a... Uh, a letter that I'd like to take the, have the board take a look at. Uh, this has to do with uh, cable TV and a, uh, a feature that's under discussion by the uh, State Senate Ways and Means the Committee. Uh, Kathleen O'Connor Ives is the chair of that committee, and the Methuen uh, uh, Cable TV Group has written a letter in support of uh, 
uh, one of the S the S designator here on the Senate. Yeah, S.1857 Act supporting community access television. Uh, if uh, ratified, the bill would allow community media stations in Massachusetts access to both high definition channel space and access to electronic programming guides. Two uh, items that are very high on our list in our negotiations. This would actually enshrine it in uh, in state law. It seems to be a low cost, no cost effort. Uh, you know, in terms of public funds that are going to be expended. So, I'm having Bob circulate this uh, to the full board, and I'm hoping we can take this up maybe at our May first meeting. Maybe send. You know, if we have a recommendation, maybe send it along to Senator Lewis. And well, I, I would go straight to the Ways and Means and copy him. You know, yeah, apparently this is up for uh, a vote soon. Uh, okay, and uh, <laughs> it's a Senate bill. Yeah, right now I think it would yeah, only have to be passed by the House also. And uh, funny that we're, we have all our dispatchers here tonight. Uh, we had could not have had a better or finer example of a dispatch emergency response that I witnessed uh, during the 11 o'clock mass at St. Agnes uh, on Sunday. Uh, a woman uh, apparently fainted. Pe people were on the spot within five minutes. Uh, it was handled so delicately taking the condition of the woman uh, into account as well as what was going on inside the church. Uh, turned out she was not in a serious situation and everything went on normally. Service concluded. Uh, it was just handled with such exquisite perfection, I thought, by everybody. So big shout out to you guys. You, you do it every time. I think that's a regular day at the office yeah, for all of these people. They, I mean, honestly, um, much as chagrin of you know some people in town, these guys actually pulled me out of my house and saved me. So uh, it's, it was, you know, my wife and children. Thank you, anyway. So uh, that's it. Okay, just a couple of really quick. Uh, um, FYI's. Uh, this Saturday, the Climate Advisory Committee is sponsoring Earth Day at Parker from 10, uh, 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock. The topic is hot and cool ideas for energy at home and on the go. And I know this year they're also going to have uh, in the parking lot those cool electric cars. So that's always uh, a fun item. Uh, another thing I just kind of want to give a shout, uh, kind of an FYI to is um, in on June 7th, actually at UMass Boston, uh, there'll be a screening of a, mo a movie called Intelligent Lies, which is an award-winning documentary. Mm -hmm. And it follows um, three uh, developmentally disabled adults as they kind of navigate trying to find jobs and get education. Um, you know, in Reading, um, we, as you know, in, in general, so basically the schools are responsible up to 21. But after 20, 22. Uh, 22, after that period of time, um, they're kind of on their own, and it's a patchwork of different services. You know, we, we, we deal a lot with that here in town. Um, and there'll be a panel discussion of the actors, uh, with the actors and also some of the participants in that movie. And I know a group of people from Reading are going to go to that. And they're also trying to bring the movie back here to Reading for a screening. So um, more on that. Um, and then also just a shout out to, um, yesterday obviously was a miserable day, but it didn't stop about 20,000 um, uh, mentally insane people from <laughs> running the Boston Marathon. And, and actually just want to give a shout out to um, one of our own, Kate McNussa, who came in, I think, 28th of the women um, uh, from the entire, not just her age group, mm -hmm. but the entire women. Um, 25th. Uh, 20, uh, well, the paper says 20, Al, Al, I don't know, Al. Come on, Al. We'll, we, we won't let the facts get Come on, away. it's a hometown thing, Al. 25th or 28th. Um, Massachusetts. So, um, you know, good for her. A uh, couple of other people, uh, uh, Paul Whitelam, who was the second person from Reading Across the Line. Liz's, uh, uh, Liz, uh, Liz's husband. Um, he came in. Um, 3,900th overall, but the second person from Reading. Mm -hmm. um, the second local woman to finish was um, Deshanti Pereira, um, and she was the 4,100, 41st hundred woman to finish. Um, other finishes of note included local resident Holly Weinberg running for Mass General Hospital pediatric cancer team for a friend's daughter battling cancer, and Kate Spillane, a Killam school teacher who ran with Dana Farber team for her student, uh, Kyle Coster. So, um, <coughs> Shout out to all those people who ran. And also a shout out to the people. Um, I know there are many, many Reading residents who were handing out water, working the medical tents, volunteering. So um, it's a great event and, and we were well represented. So uh, kudos to all those who ran and helped out. Um, that's all I have. So I um, want to open up for public comment.
Uh, yep, state your name. And yes, uh, George Ketchum, Colburn Road, and a new town meeting member representing Precinct 8, mm -hmm. along oh, with my uh, neighbor, Bill Brown. Oh, wow. Well. Okay. He's not new, though. Yeah. <laughs> I know, he usually is, right? Yeah. So, you have 50 years to kind of catch up. Uh, I know, so. I know. And I Good luck with that, George. September. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I want to say thank you to a lot of people. Uh, thanks to the police and fire departments, both chiefs were very helpful as I became sure. educated ever since uh, I got invited by our town manager to uh, get involved. And I want to thank uh, John Halsey and Barry Berman in particular who helped me during many stages of things. Um, helped me on the video that I did, the five minute video. Uh, both the police and fire department helped on that. So I, I want to say thanks to the residents, the 60% that came out and voted yes for Reading, to Aaron and Michelle, all the work they did, but also thanks to the 40% that came out and voted no. And they expressed an opinion, and as Bob and I heard at the Pleasant Street Center, uh, when Bob was answering questions about um, the override, there were two individuals that spoke very much no, on the no side, and I spent about an hour afterwards speaking to both of them, listening. And I think the listening is the key lesson that I think we all have to do better at. I think that uh, the select board that came out with the survey, I think that was key. And what was even more key was the fact that you, the school department, the police and fire department, everyone listened. And I think that's key going forward. And if I take, um, who was it, Henrietta um, Marota, the lady, uh, the senior at the final meeting before the vote that came out and was talking about, you know, <coughs> helping the seniors. That's the message I want to get forward to. I want to say that we've got to think more of what to do and help the seniors. They have a lot of value to Reading. There is a heritage there. I know they're, you know, Reading has, what, is the third town in Massachusetts to do the senior tax relief. Maybe there's other things we can do so that those who are born and grew up here can spend the rest of their life here. So how do we handle that? And how do we do all of that so they can come, be, come become supporters? Because they're one of the greatest beneficiary of our public safety, which is outstanding. I mean, as was pointed out many times during the campaign, uh, those 55 years of, old, of age and older take about 68% of public safety support. So they need to have the funds to do that, but they can't afford that. So I think, and I'll be happy to help on that as we go forward on that. And the other thing that uh, she said at, at that meeting was introduce yourselves at meetings. <laughs> and the other thing which she, I think she said, and I forgot my hearing aid tonight, is everyone needs to learn to speak louder and clearer. And I've said that to individually to several uh, people. Now, John and Barry have very loud voices, so that's... And, <laughs> I and so didn't think you said that one. <laughs> so, so in wrapping up, I just want to say, you know, let's go forward. Let's have a review in two to three years of where we are with respect to another override. We'll need another override in three to five years, so let's not go 13 years again. You know, let's have the appropriate reviews to go over those things. And um, key thing is listen to those that said no, and let's work on common issues, because they love writing, we love writing, and we'll work together with civility and not have some of the vitriolic letters to the editors that did exist. I mean, let's chill out, work together, because we have a wonderful town. I love it dearly. Thank you. Th thanks, George. No, it's, um, I appreciate those kind words. Um, we've always said that decisions are made by the people who show up. And um, on April 3rd, people showed up um, and, and they voted their passions. And whenever you get into a situation where you're dealing with tax dollars and there, there, are, there, there are lots of people who are struggling to make ends meet, um, you're gonna have things kinda get a little testy from time to time, but, but you're right. Listening is the most important thing. Um, not just listening, but hearing is the most important thing. Um, and you know, there, there are legitimate p reasons for people to vote yes and legitimate reasons for people to vote no. Um, 
but whether you voted yes or you voted no, those services are your services. And um, you know, your other point, I think, as well. You know, we've talked about it here on the board extensively. I think it's going to become an issue as we go forward. More and more is we do have an aging population in Reading. Um, the, the you know the problem of people being able to age in place is not a Reading problem. It's not a Massachusetts problem. It's probably a Northeast problem, right? Where you have um, where you have escalating real estate values, younger people coming in, demanding more services, folks who want to stay but on a fixed income. It is not a Reading problem. It's a it's a it's a national problem, but really a Northeast problem. Um, and so, but we're going to have to we're going to have to solve that problem locally. So, are there kind of projects that we can work on together that you know provide services? I mean, you know, the town government is. Our volunteers. I mean, we'll f we'll figure things out. Hopefully, as we go forward, the need is certainly there. Um, but we are really glad that this override is in the rearview mirror. Um, you know, Bob and the and the superintendent are going to now have to hurry up and fill those positions uh, to meet the expectations. But um, thank you again for your kind words. And you know, the problem's not going to go away. Um, we can now just. At least now the budget's stable, and we can work on some of these other longer-term problems, which is kind of, I know personally from my point of view, why I got involved in town government, not, not to run overrides every year. That's not a lot of fun. So thank you again. Um, any other public comment? Uh, all right, hearing none. Um, Bob, do you have a report? Just a couple quick things. Uh, just as a reminder, in case anyone forgot, next Monday night is the start of town meeting. Um, we had a pre-town meeting. We know we have at least two nights of town meeting. It's possible we'll end after two nights. Uh, next Monday and next Thursday are the first two nights. Um, two longer term events that you'll hear a little bit more as we get closer, but just to put them on calendars. Uh, Saturday, May 19th is more than just the Royal Wedding. It is also the Garden Club's plant sale. <laughs> oh, is it the 19th? It is the 19th. Oh, um, right, I missed that one. Now come early because the best plants are usually gone by 8 o'clock. No. Um, and also, as I mentioned last Thursday, on Wednesday, May 23rd at 6 o'clock in the Scatini High School Library, there's a school security summit planned. Um, this event is open to the public. It certainly will aim at uh, school age parents, school kids' parents. Um, the, the chief, myself, and the superintendent will uh, discuss as much as we can in public about building security. Um, that we had some questions over the last year or two from members of the public. And we realized we, we tend to dwell on all the things we can't talk about, but there really are a number of things we can review that we think everyone knows they may not. Um, just things like training that are done in common, drills that are done in the schools, just so everyone hears it at one time. So again, that'll be an important meeting on May 23rd at 6 o'clock. It's a little early because um, there is um, some open houses at the two middle schools uh, later that night, so we want to get it in early. Thanks. Okay. All right, moving on, uh, proclamations, um, telecommunications week. So we have a proclamation, and I don't know if the chiefs uh, want to add anything to that, but um, let's, Dan, why don't you? We'll do that first. Yep. Uh, move to approve the following proclamation. Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, which just passed. <laughs> whereas there are 11 public safety dispatchers working for the town of Reading, and whereas our public safety dispatchers serve the citizens of Reading with dedication, loyalty, and pride, and whereas the citizens of Reading rely on public safety dispatchers as their vital link to our police, fire, and ambulance services, and whereas our public safety dispatchers connect our citizens to our public safety providers who may apprehend a criminal who may save their possessions from fire or who may save their life or the life of a loved one, and whereas each year the second week of April is dedicated to the people who serve as public safety telecommunicators, and whereas in 1991 the United States Congress proclaimed Public Safety Telecommunications Week as a nat nationally recognized week. And whereas the week of April 8th through April 14th, 2018 has been proclaimed National Public Tel Safety Telecommunications Week in recognition of the contributions of public safety dispatchers and other telecommunicators nationwide. Now therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Reading, do hereby proclaim the week of April 8th through 14th 2018 is Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in Reading, and we urge all citizens to recognize the considerable contributions of our public safety dispatchers. Um, do I have a second? Second. All right. um, Chief, do oh, you want to vote on it first? Or? Yeah. All right. All in favor? Here we go. Opposed? Passes 3-0.
<laughs> Chief, I know you have some kudos you want to hand out. Absolutely. Yeah. First of all, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for allowing us to come up tonight um, for National Telecommunications Week. Uh, our dispatchers, our public safety dispatchers, I think the five people agree. There are unsung heroes behind the scenes, 24 hours a day, answering every call that comes in for service here in the town of Reading. Um, you know, they may go unnoticed from a lot of people, but they're not unnoticed from us. They really do an outstanding job for this town, and they are literally the ones who keep us safe in our cars and our fire trucks and know when we need help and, and send help and, and also keep everybody in town with 911 calls uh, safe as well. Um, just a couple of people okay. This guy dreams our uh, our supervisor dispatcher. And this is uh dispatcher Deb Haynes, dispatcher Nicole Janey. Nicole's been here about a year, um that has been here about eleven years. Um, we have a couple of uh, accommodations we gave out this year to uh, one from the police, one from the fire. Um, if we could just give a brief short sure. please. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, dispatcher Hayes, on the night of October 30th, uh, she was working the midnight eight shift all by herself. Um, she received, it was a heavy rain night with 70 mile per hour winds. She received over 50, 50 plus calls for service and had to dispatch police, fire, uh, DPW, the light department, all in, in all by herself that night and kept every everything in, in motion at the same time. As well as later on in the night had to handle a, uh, a, a serious medical aid call. So uh, again, we want she did an outstanding job by herself that night and, and really kept the town running as smoothly as, as possible for, for everybody working in public safety and in, in the, the uh, DPW and light department that night as well. Uh, thank you very much for everything you did that night. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. to say thank you as well and also um, recognize the cold uh, Janet on March 8th you may remember the uh, the snowstorm and the windstorm that came through Reading and, and knocked out power for, for a lot of people and there was a busy night for, for dispatch certainly um, from 1 30 at night till till 6 30 in the morning uh, Nicole handled over 450 phone calls and radio transmissions wow at the end of it at the end of the shift we had a uh, fire, and it didn't come in just as normal as it normally would. It came down. It came in with wires down to a neighbor's uh, property, and then uh, Nicole got a phone call for a uh, resident reporting that they're, um, they're smoking things by their by their pipes and electrical service. And it turned out that the fire that we thought was in the house behind them. So it wasn't a very easy fire to. <laughs> Where well, we got a right, right address for it, but Nicole was able to find out where it, where it was and guide the firefighters there, and also support the operation. All the while receiving phone call after phone call from the public reporting wires down and other emergencies. So um, she had to support us and she had to support the the community. Uh, right down to a resident calling, uh, asking to the school that day. So I can't imagine what it was like being in that dispatch center when all that was going on. She called me at home to tell me of the fire, uh, that we had a <coughs> second alarm fire, so I would respond there as well. And uh, going there, I heard the other phone calls, I heard the fire going on, and she just did an outstanding job all, all the way through the fire. So I want to say congratulations and thank you very much. And thank you. Just interject one little piece here. Um, both, both dispatches, all my dispatches are absolutely amazing. I treasure them. Um, and for the night that Nicole was managing the chaos, that she did so well. Miss Haynes, who lives right down the street, hopped up, got in her car, came right into work, and helped out. Nobody had to ask her to do that. She knew she took care of things. So it was spot on by both, and they both were. Definitely deserve combination and recognition tonight. Thank you. So can I ask a question? So that was that night was between what hours and what hours, Greg? Of the uh, all those? Yeah. It went all, it went for the entire 24-hour shift for our people, but it really peaked 1:30 uh, to 6:30. 450 phone calls and radio transmissions. So, so it's a lot of radio. So that's more than one a minute. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got. I mean, I was listening to that, and I just said to myself, "How do you do that?" Uh, you know. I mean, that's really. 
that's something. And it's not only just receiving it. Nicole had to call other departments and have them respond. Right, call sure. the light department and ask them to respond. Call them, ask them to come yeah, back. I know it's not just an answer. I know, yeah. I know yeah. you have to actually be doing something on the other. That's just a, yeah. an amazing, you know, no. worth more than a commendation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, uh, no, you guys do it. <laughs> Chief, <laughs> <laughs> next year maybe. No. Reading's a busy place. Yeah. yeah it is. No, you guys do a tremendous job, and we're 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 grateful. And it's one of those things where you know you're you're, you're in some ways you're like a, a referee in a basketball game or an umpire in a baseball game. Nobody really notices you until you do something wrong <laughs> or, or you miss something, yeah. right? Maybe we get them to come in and do our meetings. Yeah. <laughs> but when you guys, if you guys miss something, you know there could be lives at stake. So I know the pressure. Is, is great but um, you know speaking on behalf of the board and really for the entire town we're incredibly grateful for the work that you do so thank you, thank you um, very much yeah so now do we do want to who gets this we want to maybe take a photo or oh we're going this way okay you guys want to go on the way yeah come on we'll come up yeah. yeah. everybody we normally walk that way but just by right in the middle right, right in the heart yeah. well all right yes Bob, you want to come in too? Cheeks, do you want to? I'm going to hand this to the bill. You can't be able to watch this. I'm good. I'm right here. Get in here, guys. Mark, not your back. Your better side. That's a lot of things. My eyes open. Thank you. Thank you so much. 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 Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for everything you do. I really appreciate it. I'm not going in there. It's a dangerous place. It's full of moxie. Oh, that's okay. I didn't even notice. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, moving on. Okay, uh, um, this is the uh, hearing for 467 yep. Main Street. Please take notice that the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Reading will hold a public hearing on April 17, 2018 at 8 o'clock p.m. in Selectmen's Meeting Room 16, Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, to approve the request in 467 Main Street regarding an entrance exit waiver, outdoor dining license, and the addition of three parking spots on Main Street. A copy of the proposed document regarding this topic will be available on the Board of Selectmen packet made it public on Thursday, April 12, 2018 on the website at www.readingma.gov. All interested parties are invited to attend the hearing or may submit their comments in writing or by email prior to 6 p.m. on April 17, 2018 to town manager at ci.reading.ma.us. So... Do we have the? Oh, um, just uh, just for the record, we received no public comment. Okay. Motions. Yep. Is, um, okay. is there anybody here from the public that just want to just take a brief? Uh, okay. All right. So, gentlemen. First of all, I'm Ray Bogus. I'm developer. That's Rob Del Salvo, architect. Uh, apologize, uh, Brian McGraw, our legal counsel, had a conflict tonight and could not attend. Um, but um, similar to last time we are here, uh, we're seeking three approvals from the board selection. One being the uh, garage entrance is uh, 43.7 feet from the intersection of Main and Green. And we're seeking approval from the board selected to allow for the, uh, I guess, a waiver um, to be within uh, under 50 feet from the intersection. 
The other thing we're looking for uh, permission for is the outdoor seating located in this area right here. You mean where the cars uh, are up on the sidewalk? The cars on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, we understand that we'd have to, whoever rents this space, if they choose to do the outdoor seating there, they have to come back with a detailed seating plan. Um, we fully understand that. Uh, we just wanted the CPTC wanted to come here and uh, get permission, I guess, in a, in a general sense. Um, contingent upon them coming back with a, a detailed plan you guys agree upon. And lastly, uh, we're looking for approval for uh, any between zero and three parking spaces in front of the building right here, okay? Um, that's really subject to the board selection and, and how they want to, um, they choose to prove it, how many spaces they like there. But we think safely you can fit three there. Um, we've had traffic studies and pipeline studies and we think that's uh, you know, a safe approach to go, but it's ultimately up to the board selection. So that's just a cutback on the sidewalk. Is that what's going to go? Because it's a wide, wide sidewalk. So currently right now, yes, there, there's two curb cuts right here, and they're very large. Right. And this sidewalk is uh, at the largest point, 17 feet. Mm. So it's very large. You need you know, eight and a half for a parking space. So we feel that you can, you can put these parking spaces here and still have the seven feet um, pathway for our residents to walk. Yep. So we feel like that's you know the safe amount of way. That's kind of the general standards, uh, about seven feet, and we feel like it's got to be safe, and it also offers three parking spaces, which you know that town is. Is that uh, a strip of landscaping between the sidewalk and the street that we're so seeing there? Those nice boards you guys put in downtown yeah. recently. Mm -hmm. um, the regular papers that are in there. Yeah, the brick favors. So yeah. those are up here, and right now they're it stops here. If the curb cut starts here oh, for a little right. bit, mm -hmm. the curb cut. Okay. You have the right huge here. curb cut for the gas station. Yeah. Yes, right. there's, yeah, there's yeah. two very there's large two curb giant curb ones there. Yeah. So you're yeah. not losing anything. Yeah, they're, they're not your typical, you know, 22 foot curb cut. They're they're very large. So we will close this one curb cut, continue mm -hmm. the brick border so it matches, um, and then take this existing curb cut and uh, make the parking space out of that. So, so basically those three spots um, are similar, kind of move the left toward the map, like in front of Professor's Market, they have those three kind of spots you can kind of pull up into. Yes, that's uh, the marker up here. Yeah. Yes. So it, it kind of, it kind of it extends the downtown a little bit further out, which I think mm -hmm. is a good, which I think is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, question about the... Uh, about the outside, uh, the outside table. So right now, obviously, you don't know what's going to go in there yet, right? Uh, so. No, we, we don't. We don't know what retailer is going to take the right. space. We're just basically looking for: uh, Are you guys willing to approve outdoor seating here if a layout, if someone came to you with a layout? Um, right. So you could be you could be leasing it to somebody who doesn't you know, like you normally wouldn't have that. So it, it, it may or may not come before us, but you're just looking for some guidance. Yeah. yeah. So we okay. we look to approve it in the CBDC. What's allowed to approve that so they right. asked us to come to you guys and uh, get that approved so we just want to kind of check our boxes and make sure you guys will be open to something like this or not it does, you know. and then i think um wouldn't whoever goes in there if they actually wanted to do it do they have to come back yes, yes. that's what it would be so we come out out total you go control yeah i think we um have a uh, directive that the staff mm -hmm. can handle that so that Go people good. aren't tied Even up better. they're going to come back to the yeah. board right. yeah. handle, handle that unless it's complicated yeah, yeah if it's i think we only have one in town right now we only now. have one yep one outside yeah uh, which one is that uh, uh, DMG. DMG. Oh, DMG. 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 Right. we had three at one point but yeah. uh, okay. portland's gone yeah yeah, the Meaches is like two. Really yeah. yeah. But it, you know, in the nice weather, it gets used all the time. It's yeah. great. You know, people really like it. Yeah. Um, Actually, you have the green, the green tomato. That's uh, on private property. Okay. That sidewalk is private property. Yeah. Oh, really? That, that yeah. part of it. Yeah. yeah. Up close okay. to the building. Yeah. Yeah. I actually think that's a nice amenity to the. Sure. Should a you know restaurant go in there? I think it's a nice amenity. I think so. Well, I mean, I think people love outdoor seating. It's such a short season that you try to you know try to grasp it as much as you can. Anybody comes in here and gives us parking places, it's a it's a nice idea. Gene <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 PTTF had no objection to the uh, 46 foot waiver. Yeah, I, I see no issue with that. Yeah. We, we talked that through last time. It's uh, just a correction. Um, 40, our original memo said 46. Yeah, it's 43.7 when right. we say the last time. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And now when you come out of Green Street, you can't make that left-hand turn, right? No. So, or go well, straight. 
well, is that in place now? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Is the sign up? Okay. It's been up for a while, but people are still doing needing it. Needing to get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They haven't um, gotten used to it yet. Gene, if we approve the, the three parking spots, there's nothing that we have to make a decision now about. Are they half hour spots, one hour spots, two hour? I mean, I would say they would default to two hours if you don't do anything different. That's what the downtown default is. I, and then we can maybe change that depending on the yeah. usage well, of I that. Well, I think, yeah, it depends. Like, so, for example, the ones in front of the Quick Stop and yeah. the Professor Market are 30 minutes right. for good reason. Mm -hmm. You, know, you want to encourage people coming to go. And if that kind of business right. is there, then I'm guessing they'd probably petition. So, yeah, so we don't have to decide what. No, I don't think so. Now, right? No. We can just, okay. We can figure that out on the floor. Okay. Uh, the parking spaces, uh, the motion says up to three. Do we want to stipulate three precisely, or do you want to leave it up to three? Well, I mean, if three fit, I, uh, I'd i like three. So, That's yeah, while we're here, is, uh, that was another kind of, you know, uh, loose point with our CPDC, with mm -hmm. how many of you guys feel you want in there. Um, and like I said, it could be one space, it could be two, it could be three. Um, it's really ultimately up to you guys. So three spaces, like with a normal car? Yeah, okay. I think they're 24, 26. Yeah. 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 Do, you, yeah. you would not be the intention to use that as a loading zone? Or an no, no, no. Okay. That's, that's, and so you have the loading on the property? It's under the, the, loading on the property. Inside the garage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. Um, anybody, any comment? George, did you want to know? Yeah, sorry, I missed the very beginning, but I'm a little bit confused. The blue represents the retail space. It's not very deep. It's like a car length deep, right? If I'm seeing Down here is narrow, up here is about 20 feet. Yeah. And so space. how many retail spaces are you expecting in there? And where are the living spaces up above? Well, it's just, is see the yellow? The, uh, see this yellow shading? Goes in then all the way to the front right. edge. Okay. So that's the building above. Uh, the, this and is how many stories is it? The two it's or four. three above? Three above. Yep. With a setback on the fourth floor. So how many retail spaces do you expect in the blue area? Uh, we think it's going to be between one and two. Uh, depends on the retail okay. tenant. As I remember, it's 2,500 square feet. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, you could, you, I would say two would probably be max. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think we'd break it. And my guess is that the right person goes in there, they're going to want the whole space. That's what I'm hoping for. Like it's probably a seating area or something along the lines of that. Or a UPS door or, you know, something that can handle a narrower space and then up here can handle a lot more. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, David Cannon, 38th Street. Uh, just a question regarding the uh, clearance between that outdoor seating table on the furthest one to the right and the edge of that parking space, closest parking space. Does you have a clearance there? It's about five feet. About oh, five feet? Yeah. That meets all the requirements. Yeah, the more than five feet. I think exactly what the table is. Mm -hmm. so. And like we said, whoever comes here would have to come back with a detailed um, seating plan. So if they feel like that's too tight, you know, maybe it's two tables, or maybe it's a table here, and they, you know, it's that's really often up to the uh, tenant will be in there, and all the town. So you have minimums that you can meet. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Any other comments or questions? To close the hearing. Move to uh, the board of select and close the hearing on 467 Main Street. I so move. You two second. Oh, second. <laughs> I'll do that. All right. <laughs> those in favor? Opposed. Hearing's closed. Right. Yeah, I'll do these as one motion. Uh, and correct me if I'm, I'm getting any of these numbers wrong. Gene. Move that the board of selectmen approve the entrance exit location to the project on Green Street at 46.3 feet. 43.7. 43.7. 43.7. Feet from Main Street intersection as required by the decision. So that would be with a 6.3 foot deviation from the desired 50 feet, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And move that the Board of Selectmen grant permission for the project to have outdoor seating on the sidewalk at the street level of the commercial space conditioned on any, upon any further tenants or occupants applying for and obtaining an outdoor and outdoor dining license pursuant to the Board of Selectmen policy section 3.10 and move that the Board of Selectmen approve the project at Bogos expense to create three on-street parking spaces which will be fully public and regulated as the town of Reading sees fit. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Passes 3-0. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. When, uh, when are we going to see a shovel in the ground? Uh, we're hoping in August. 
Okay. Um, okay. We're developing a plans right now. Great. Open in August. Um, Gas station has a little bit of cleanup. Yeah. Uh, great. Okay. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. What? Uh, next up is a uh, change of DBA uh, for the Art Lounge. Thanks, Chief. Okay. Is there anybody here from the Art Lounge? No. Do they need to be? No. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. She's just dropping the the on the Art Lounge. Oh, on David. Yeah, that's pretty oh. routine. Okay. She just wanted to make it no hearing. all uh, just the, no. Okay. Because I guess on our business certificate doesn't have the the. She just, she just wanted to make so it. So she's not really changing the structure. Um, she went from an LLC to a sole proprietor. Okay. And, and Bob, do we care about that at all? No. Uh, I don't think so. In town council, we've seen it. Yep. Okay. Dan? Move that the Board of Selectmen approve the change of DBA and corporate structure of the wine and malt general on premise license for the art lounge on Haven, located at 78 Haven Street, Reading, Mass. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Net? Zero? All right. So um, zero. Well, I'll take your word. We did the minutes. No, we did so three. So we did three of them, and then March 27. Is that actually? Is that not in, in here. So oh, all right. right. So we'll wait on that. Okay. So um, I think we're. I think wow. we're about there done. we go. So do more like that. Yeah. Yeah. This has <laughs> got to be almost a record. Uh, uh, not for quite. A record, yeah. For a regularly scheduled meeting. Did 15 meeting. minutes once. Um, <laughs> so, you're, you're a piker. Forget it. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I, I came to that one. Yeah. Uh, so just um, we're going to be back on our sort of regularly scheduled uh, meetings on May 1st. We'll have basically for the first time all five new members present, um, although I'm sure we'll all be there for town yeah. meeting, but we won't be meeting. Bob, I had a quick question. Yeah. Is that true that fall town meeting is starting on a Thursday? Is there a reason why that's happening? Yeah. Um, I don't remember. Veterans Day is sprinkled in there somewhere. Oh, maybe that's it. It, it um, happened to fall on a Monday, maybe. I think that's true. Okay. And I think that, um, you know, we don't typically start town meetings on a Tuesday. You know, many other things from Monday could be go on a Tuesday, but um, the way the Reading Charter reads, if the date's not available, it's next Monday or Thursday. Yeah, November 11th so is a Sunday, and so that means the, the observance is the 12th. Yeah, Monday. That explains so, it. So we'd have to go to so we're starting Thursday on the 15th. The 15th. Right, okay. and we'll finish mm -hmm. Monday. Well, oh, you I have no idea what's going to be on the agenda, so well, I'll just say that. We'll see. <laughs> All right, I have entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Can I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Those no. We are adjourned at 842.